Hey guys, welcome back to Warner Farms. So a lot of you guys know about the S690 that we bought to uh, essentially replace the 9650 and then some, I guess you can say, because the 90, uh, S690 is by far a lot bigger of a replacement for the 9650 than what I would want. But for the deal we got it at, it'll definitely do. But anyways... Uh, nothing's happening yet with the combine. Um, it, we're going to either do, we're either going to do one of two things as far as, uh, what we're going to do with the combine. And that would be, we're going to trade the combine off with the 893 eight row corn head, or, uh, we're going to sell the combine off with the 893 corn head, which, we're not really leaning towards selling. We would much rather trade. So trading is more uh, what we would like to do. So, but if it comes down to it, we may end up selling. But I'm I'm more comfortable with trading and everything. And plus, I didn't like what I had to go through with the track tractor having to sell that. That just or the strip till. You know, a lot of annoying stuff to jump through on hoops and everything that was just not very fun so as far as selling so but uh before this goes whether it gets traded or sold um i wanted to show you guys how i mounted the midland radios or the midland radio mxt 115 uh in the cab and where I ended up putting the antenna, because a lot of you guys were asking me about this, and a lot of you guys have 50, 60, and 70 series cabs, and even uh, the 9400s, 9500s, 9600s, and the 10 series as well. So, which I'm not very familiar with those 1990s combines. I'm more familiar with uh, the 50, 60, 70s, and a little bit on the S series. Not so much the newer styled S series, but more... Uh, comfortable with uh, the S series kind of we got in that early range. I mean, I know ours is the first, the first generation S series, which the cab's totally different, but I'm getting used to it a little bit. So, um, but anyways, uh, first thing right off the bat, you guys are probably gonna notice the shields. Shields are all laying over there. I may or may not hit them with the pressure washer. I don't know, but. I'll go ahead and climb up and, well, actually, we'll walk over here and I'll open up the side here because it'd be easier to show you guys how I mounted the uh, uh, antenna. Uh, actually, let me climb up on the duels here and I'll get back with you guys in a minute. Okay, so now that we're on top of the duels here, I can show you guys a little bit better on how I mounted uh, the antenna. Um, I'll climb up on the platform later and show you guys what I used to mount that and why I mounted it there. But as you can see, I mounted it right there on the platform, which I'll show you later, like I said. And I traced the wire and just zip tied it. I kind of used a little bit more zip ties than what I was planning on doing, but it looks pretty clean. And there's a little gap right in here you can kind of see, and I laid it kind of in that ledge. And I traced it. Actually, it's it sits on top of that bolt there. And I just traced the wire all the way up on here. And uh, there's a hole to go inside the cab there for all the wires and everything and the isobus harnesses and stuff, or can bus. And uh, I ran it in there. And I'll show you guys exactly how I uh, traced the wire then into the cab. And if you can kind of see uh where the uh mic is kind of setting and i'll show you guys exactly where the uh um radio is mounted that uh bulky wiring harness that's laying alongside the cab there that was laying on top of the cab i threw that down along the side there that is actually for the starfire 3000 globe which is on top of the cab and the reason why it's down here and that's on the side where i threw it or laid it down there was because I was pressure washing the top of the cab. So anyways, I'll go ahead and jump down and I'll climb up on the platform here and I'll show you guys uh, how I mounted the antenna and why I mounted it there. Okay, so I'm up here on the platform and uh, 
So the clamp that I use to mount the antenna on, uh, this is actually the 6 dB antenna. Um, you can just see there's a couple of uh, some corn whiskers on here, corn fuzz. Uh, still wrapped around it a little bit, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend this as being the ideal antenna spot um, as far as reception goes. Uh, we can get with this antenna mounted in this spot uh, 25 to 30 mile range on this, though I haven't tested it farther than that because that's as far apart basically as our farms have gotten um, from Stark County clear over uh, uh, far over by our uh, farms that we could farm close over by in Wanata. So I've tested that as far as range goes. I can't, I haven't really tested it any farther just because, like I said, we don't farm any farther apart than that. But that was just because the, uh, I was clear over there, uh, field cultivating that tomato field to level it up. And dad was, uh, over cutting beans over on, uh, are one of the farms that we farm over in Stark County. So I wouldn't recommend this as being the ideal spot. You wanna try and find the top of the cab um, or a spot high enough that sticks up above the cab because as you can see, that's pretty well keeping the GoPro level as level as I can get. Um, it barely, I would just say it sets level with the grain tank folded down and obviously you know this grain tank extension. Um, we did not put this on by the way, this is a Mauer uh, I believe if that's how you pronounce it correctly, Mauer uh, grain bin extension. I believe this sticks up 18 inches above the cab, if I'm correct, if I looked it up online correctly. Um, I did not take the time to measure it because obviously I did not want to unfold it and measure it. But as you can see, it does have the NMO, NMO antenna connector or adapter on top of the cab. So essentially, uh, you can take this antenna and unscrew it once I can get it unscrewed here and as you can see there is the adapter and that's all it does is just screw right on there and you can mount it if you unscrew that uh, cap and mount it on top of the NMO, NMO adapter on top of the cab. The reason why I did not do that is because that shed right there that I'm looking at right now that shed is only 13 or 14 feet to the rafters and we have to fold down the, I don't think that's screwed on all the way, but it doesn't matter, I'm taking it off, uh, probably tonight. But anyways, that shed is only 13 to 14 feet to the rafters and every time we pull this combine in the shed or into the shop, regardless if it's going in the shop, the grain tank has to be folded down in order to get into the shed, therefore to get into the shop. Um, because the ceiling is the same throughout, obviously. So I did not want to mount it up there uh, because I do not have a way to uh, have the antenna be the antenna to be able to fold down as such as the uh, UHF or whatever you want to call the radio antenna there for the radio as it can fold down. If you if you guys know on these combines that they are able to fold down. Uh, on the side of the cab here and the Starfire 3000 does fit just barely um, I believe there's like a few inches from the top of the roof between that and the top of the antenna there so we are able to keep that on but with the antenna I was afraid that it was either going to bend it if not snap it um, so eventually I know our S series has it the S690 does I'm probably going to uh, work with Midland on this and see what their thoughts are on making like some type of type of an adapter or some type of styled antenna that allows it to fold down or if they make such of an antenna. Um, I'm a big fan of these 6 dB antennas, especially for the range. So if you're looking for, uh, if you have issues uh, when farming uh, on communication wise on uh, rolling hills that you farm on. I would highly highly recommend these 6 dB antennas um, They will increase your communication range significantly um, As I discussed earlier, so that's why I do not have it mounted up there so That's talking about the antenna um, As far as the bracket goes, I forgot to name what the bracket is. This is a uh, Pull or clamp bracket. I believe if you look under uh, if you look under uh, the micro mobile accessories on Midland's website, which I'll link down below. All these 
uh, everything that I'm using on this combine down below. And uh, this is just the polar clamp bracket. I believe it's like 30 bucks. Um, this is what I planned on using this for, so that's why I just ordered it with the clamp bracket because I knew I wasn't going to be able to mount it on top of the cab unless I come up with a way to uh, fold the antenna down. So eventually I would like to mount it on top of there, but for now I have it stuck here. And actually it does a, it does a good job mounted right here, and I was afraid of uh, the vibration of the antenna wiggling a lot and getting annoying when sitting in the cab and it actually doesn't really vibrate that much right here and wiggle the antenna bad so that's another plus. Another idea I had though on mounting this was to mount it behind the mirror. You could actually do this um, but I decided to just uh, decided to just uh, mount it right here just for visibility purposes and uh, running the cable. God, it's cold out here. My hands are like froze. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and climb in the cab then and uh, show you guys exactly how I traced the wire and uh, mounted the radio. So obviously the cab needs to be cleaned out a little bit, but I have my phone flashlight. And if you see down there, if I can lay my phone like there, um, or like that, uh, this right here, if I can grab it, this is the uh, NMO, NMO antenna cap on top of the cab. So this wire is actually run from that adapter up there down to here. So this combine was actually wired for it. So if I do put the antenna up on top of the S-series, which I know all the S-series are wired this way as well. Um, I believe it's in like the cup holder. You pull that up, I heard. So, and the wire's sitting right there. But this bundle of wires right down here, this is the Midland wire. Um, I just kind of whipped it up and zip tied it because this is a six meter cable and I did not get the three meter cable because I was afraid of where I was going to mount the antenna and whether I was going to need a six meter or the three meter. So I went ahead and got the six meter. Um, I would just highly recommend getting the six meter unless you know for a fact you don't need it. So if you're on the fence between the three meter and six meter, just get this and do what I did if you have a little bit of excess. So from there, uh, we went ahead and mounted the radio uh, on the vent tower because actually there is a bracket on here already. And I went ahead and unscrewed that bracket and screwed the Midland, uh, Midland radio bracket for the MXT 115 right there onto the vent tower since that's this plastic and the radio just slides in right there and then we're able to turn it on as if i've already turned it on and we're able to access all the functions on here so uh from there uh i went ahead and just plugged the uh mic adapter in and dad just keeps it right here because that's where he wanted it I'm not entirely sure if he ever mounted the uh, clip anywhere. I don't know if he actually thought about doing that or what. Um, I know it's probably in here somewhere. If not, it's, I don't know, in the shop somewhere. But it was no big deal because he actually likes keeping it right there in the cup holder. Uh, for wiring, uh, these come standard uh, with a plug um, or a clip uh, wired for... Uh, uh, the cigarette adapter. So as you can see, the cigarette adapter is right, or the cigarette plug-ins right here for the car chargers and etc. So basically, these are car charger setups. So you can throw these in in less than a minute in a vehicle. Um, in less, as far as getting the antenna set up, because these do come with uh, magnetic little antennas. But I would highly recommend using the 6 dB antennas or even a 3 dB um, for getting better range. Um, so I went ahead and spliced the plug off and, uh, clipped the plug off the, uh, cigarette adapter and, uh, spliced the wire onto the John Deere, um, uh, plug-in that you can buy. I believe that was like $7. I don't know if you guys can see that plug-in or not for the outlet strip. 
Uh, I'll have to redo that wiring a little bit because that was actually uh, about a five minute job that I threw together real quick. That we can that way we can get the radio in here quick. Uh, since this radio is going to go in the S690, but uh, there is actually a trigger wire in there on the John Deere plug-in harness there. Um, it's the orange wire because there's an, or uh, an orange, red, and white wire. Uh, orange, red, and black wire, sorry, not white. And the orange wire is your trigger wire, meaning if you uh, turn the key... Um, one click to run the battery uh it'll actually turn the radio on so actually you can keep the radio in the on position but right now it would be actually considered off if i had it on the trigger wire which i don't um the only reason why i do not have it on the trigger wire is because uh, in such cases like running it in the 8530 i can sit on the ends shut the tractor off while i'm waiting to catch a dump from the combine and uh, keep the radio on. That way, if Dad has a problem, he can still radio me and I can have the radio on then. So, and then at the end of the day, obviously, you would just shut the radio off, which that's no big deal for us. So, that is basically um, how I set the radio up in the combine. I know some of you guys have their own opinions on how to set the radio up in your cab um that is basically my recommendation on how we did it um as far as the 8530 goes um i don't think i covered on how to or how i mounted that in there i'll probably do like a whole setup on um how i set the cab cam monitor up in there along with the midwind radio so i'll do like a joint video there um but yeah so i'll have to get this out eventually here i don't think i'm gonna do it today because it's already getting dark and it's getting cold out colder than what it was earlier so um but anyways uh, as far as i know i do not know what we're going to do with the combine neither does dad we're still debating over what we're going to do um but anyways guys thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below and uh don't forget to check out midwind radios down below i would i will have everything i showed you guys linked down below obviously no obviously though not the john deere wiring harness um or auxiliary plug harness um if you absolutely want one uh, i would recommend going on the uh, jd parts website and looking up to see how much for sure it actually is or if you're uh, good friends with your salesman, shoot your salesman a Facebook message or whatever, or a text or a call, and find out exactly how much it is and get yourself one ordered. So, but anyways, anyways guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.